Warm greetings on behalf of Friday Waters, an initiative of the W4W Foundation, a think tank built as Citizens Collective. We welcome you to today's session. Friday Waters is a continuation of Wednesdays for Water, which has been running for quite some time now. Each of these Friday Water sessions takes place uh, once a month, and there are four Friday Water sessions, which are Water Talkies, which is today, uh, Water Reading Club, Water Thesis Club, and Water Art Sessions. Uh, the idea of Friday Waters is to bring water knowledge available in the various alternate forms at one place for developing a better understanding of about the water matters in different possible ways. Mm -hmm. The Friday Water sessions are designed to be fun-filled and yet to be fruitful. And you can watch most of our Friday Waters um, sessions are already now online in our website, www.w4w.in. My name is Mansi Bal Bhargav, and I'm joined by Anuja Bali as the discussant today uh, for the water art session. For today, we have filmmaker Jalaluddin Baba to discuss the film Saving the Savior and many more things around water matters. Let me hand it over to uh, Anuja to discuss the film and more with him. And over to you, Anuja. And thank you so much, Jalal Sab, to come to this session and <laughs> Anuja to take the session forward. Over to you. Thank you, Mansi, and welcome, uh, Jalaluddin Baba. We'll be calling, we'll be addressing him as uh, Jalal. So welcome. Aapka bhot bhot swagat hai, Kashmir se, all the way. Pleasure, and, pleasure. Aur uh, aap to already bhot hi uh, naam keen gorilla filmmaker ke naam uh, usse jane jate hain. Aapke films ne bhot awards uh, jeete hain. So aapko hum kya introduce karein, lekin fir bhi let me just try a little bit. Um, Jalaluddin Baba has profound involvement in spreading water conservation and protection beliefs through storytelling and better filmmaking. He concentrates on betterment of natural resources, scientific evolution, and investigation to instill logical minds to advance themselves into the world of environmental science and technology. Um, this makes him an unmatched green filmmaker and science communicator with great influence. He has been invited nationally and internationally in pursuit of film craft masterclasses, lectures and presentations, and has numerous national and international recognitions to his credit. Some of his notable recognitions are national award by Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, for science communication um, in electronic media. National Geographic Channel Award in 2018, Water Storytelling, Lights, Camera, Earth Award 2019, Best Water Documentary Film Story, Saving the Savior, which we discuss today, and many others. Welcome again, Jalal. We are very happy and privileged to have you here. Thank with you us. very much for inviting me and having interaction with your audiences and you yourself. That's a great thing for me. Thank you. So, when you saw your film, the first thing that strike was the connection uh, to the reality. So, so um, would you like to say something about the film uh, before I play that uh, beginning of the film? Yeah, this film is like, uh, it's a chance-made film. Mm -hmm. Myself, I belong to the uh, same area, it's called the Sopor, which is 70 kilometers from Srinagar. I have been brought up in that water lake in itself, mm -hmm. using those bounties, say the water, the Cheshna, the fish, the Nadru, the other things. Mm -hmm. Water lake is like a civilization, complete civilization. But unfortunately, since last 35 years, and more or less since last 50, 60 years, but in particular, since the conflict is there, it has gone, I mean, tremendous change. It's no more uh, the same thing. It's no more the same water lake we were used to, say, 30 years down the line. Yeah. And, and this is the biggest lake we have in as far as uh, freshwater lake is concerned in Asia. It's the second biggest freshwater lake. So it's a Ram Ramsar Convention site. It's very much paramount for us as far as our ecotourism is concerned, as mm -hmm. far as wildlife is concerned, migratory birds are concerned. But I have seen it before my eyes how it was just, I mean, just degrading, degrading and degrading. So 
in conflict, you know, it's it's a different ball game. It's entirely a different game, how to tackle the conflict. And this conflict, conflict in its, its, its shades, the Willer Lake and the other lakes were completely ignored by media, by government, by NGOs, by civil society in itself. And then conflict is made on, say, a lot of controversies and some things are done by the government itself and the private parties itself. The lake was encroached upon to such an extent which like restricted it now to say half, which is hundred and say hundred and hundred ten kilometers square kilometers in area. Otherwise, it was <clears throat> used to be two hundred seventy-two, almost fifty years down the line. Um, so everybody was after the awareness of the conflict, shock, shock stories from coming from Kashmir. Nobody would care about Buller Lake. Nobody would care about the environment, the water, the forest, and the kids, the children, women. So I felt, how I can be a different? Mm -hmm. Because I always wanted to do something different in life. So environment came into mind. This is the area where nothing has been done. And I should just go and explore it, research it, and put some good stories to the audiences, put some good stories to the, the, the administration, to NGOs, the civil society. So we have some kind of retrospections. We have some kind of, say, just um, say, Afka is soul searching what we have done since last 50 years to this lake, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, it is like a lifeline for Kashmir. It's a lifeline for our ecology. It's a lifeline for our economy, actually. Yeah. And we have seen it in, in blood, flesh, and bones in 2014 when we, we, we had that kind of a flood. I mean, huge deluge, deluge almost 18 feet of water. Oh, if Willard Lake, if Willard Lake not, not, was not there as a reservoir, as a capacity builder, it would have flattened the whole of Kashmir. Whole of Kashmir, I say with authority. Wooler Lake saved us from that devastation. So that way, Wooler Lake is like, it's a oratory. It's a, what Nile to, is to Egypt, what Amazon is to the whole of the Americas and the Brazil and all, Wooler Lake is to us. And this film is that architect which shows you Kashmir is not seen, but it is being thought about that. It's a glittering example. It's a tourism destination. It's a paradise. I'm so sorry. There are so many things which we need to take care of, which we need to tackle, which we have to do it for our children and for our children's children for generations to come. That's yeah. complex of that story, complex of that careless, that careness that my uh, to play my bit in terms of conservation and protection, this film has come, come into existence. Thank you so much. This really is a very touching and you can feel every word that you said because it's true if you want to preserve anything for the future that they don't go to museums and you know look at what once upon there was a lake here or a river here we have to conserve and i would like to show uh, the beginning of the film which is very very impactful uh, so let me share my screen and um, please enjoy this amazing uh, impact the film um, is talking about. Okay. Are you able to see it? Yes. Yeah, we are able to see it. Okay. Just say it. 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 Just say बिलाल डार स्वयं 12 13 साल की अपनी उम्र से पिछले 5 6 साल से स्वच्छता में लग गया है एशिया के सबसे बड़ा झील श्रीनगर के पास वहां प्लास्टिक हो पॉलीथिन हो यूज बॉटल हो कूड़ा कचरा हो बस वो साफ करता रहता है उसमें से कुछ कमाई भी कर लेता है क्योंकि उसके पिताजी की बहुत छोटी आयु में कैंसर में मृत्यु हो गई लेकिन उसने अपना जीवन आजीविका के साथ साथ स्वच्छता के साथ जोड़ दिया एक अनुमान है कि बिलाल ने सालाना 12000 किलो से ज्यादा कूड़ा कचरा साफ किया है श्रीनगर नगर निगम को भी मैं बधाई देता हूं कि स्वच्छता के प्रति 
इस पहल के लिए और एम्बेसडर के लिए उनकी इस कल्पना के लिए क्योंकि श्रीनगर एक टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन है पूरा हिंदुस्तान का हर नागरिक श्रीनगर जाने का मन करता है उसका और वहां सफाई को इतना बल मिले ये अपने आप में बहुत बड़ी बात है और मुझे खुशी है कि उन्होंने बिलाल को सिर्फ ब्रांड एम्बेसडर बनाया ऐसा नहीं सफाई करने वाला बिलाल उसको निगम ने इस बार गाड़ी दी है यूनिफॉर्म दिया है और वो अन्य इलाकों में भी जाकर के लोगों को स्वच्छता के लिए शिक्षित करता है प्रेरित करता है और परिणाम लाने तक पीछे लगा रहता है बिलाल डार आयु छोटी है लेकिन स्वच्छता में रुचि रखने वाले हर किसी के लिए प्रेरणा का कारण है मैं बिलाल डार को बहुत बधाई देता हूँ so the the although bilal sings in kashmiri lekin wo साउंड वो इतना हॉन्टिंग है वो दर्द भले वो शब्द आप सिर्फ ट्रांसलेटेड पढ़ सकते हैं बट इट रियली इज वेरी यू नो डिस्टर्बिंग कि कैसे उतनी छोटी उम्र में उसने उतना सब कुछ सहा एंड ही स्टिल कंटिन्यूड एंड आई ऑल्सो रेड अबाउट कैसे आपने आप गलती से लाइक यू सेड की एक गलती से वो था हाउ यू मेट हिम मैंने वो भी पढ़ा था तो वुड यू लाइक टू यू नो शेयर की आपके कैसे ये जहन में आया कि इसके ऊपर फिल्म बननी है और ये बिलाल ही मेरा प्रोटैगनिस्ट होगा ये इट्स 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 अ स्टोरी एक्चुअली आई एम एकेडमिशियन टू सो आई टीच इन यूनिवर्सिटीज अक्रॉस इंडिया एंड दैट डे आई वाज इन कश्मीर यूनिवर्सिटी सो वी वी यूज्ड टू टेक टी फ्रॉम अ लोकल टी स्टॉल आउटसाइड दूनिवर्सिटी कैंपस सो आई फाउंड अ बॉय was serving tea i asked him his name he didn't say me the name said said you have your tea and just go back where you whatever you want to do you do but don't ask me anything so i felt there is something inside this boy he he doesn't wish to tell somebody but there's a pain so i pursued it and after some time i made him to tell me what's your story why are you selling tea why don't you go at school mm-hmm. he told me his story like we have a problem at home so i took a address and um tried to help from my side actually and i told the same story to my kids they bought up their own piggy bank said we would love to help bilal so i felt okay let's help bilal with something but before we could help uh i had taken the camera and i was always in search of like <clears throat> putting some story on wooden lake i had done it before three four times but i wanted to like do through some kind of a story which can definitely definitely make impact on ground and it 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 can change the the, the minds of people it can change the perception of people about wooden lake and all so i reached a shrine called baba shukurdi mm mm-hmm. Just like above, almost two hundred, three hundred meters uh, from Wooler Lake, so I started to shoot things from that point, and it's almost after three, four months once I had met Bilal, mm-hmm. so I could uh, from my lens uh, I could find different people doing different things in Wooler Lake. Some were like catching fish, some were just uh, plucking some. grasses from wooler lake and somewhere used to take those um singade we call it sheshnats 
something like that, and Nadru rhizomes and, and everything. But there was a boy who was doing a different thing, yeah, yeah. entirely different thing. He was just uh, taking uh, plastic, polythene, anything which didn't belong to Buller Lake, actually. He was picking those things and putting to his shikar. Mm -hmm. It was very amazing for me. I had met him, but from that distance, I couldn't just understand it. It might be the same guy. It was such a surprising situation for me. Then I made it a point, oh, let mm -hmm. me go to that place. And I took my car and reached that place and called Bilal. The moment I found his Bilal, it was very, I mean, it was, it was shocking to me. I could see the boy serving tea and then I could see the same boy in Wola Lake taking trash out from Wola Lake. So I asked him, why do you live? You have given me a different address. You are at a different address. This is almost 10 kilometers from that point where you are living. You said me it's a Lehrwa Ghat. You are in Vatla, which is quite a far a place. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't come up first, but I made him somehow. You just tell me, you know, just gave him some assurances and made him a friend-like environment. Then he started to tell me the story why I'm at this place is like I collect trash from the Buller Lake, but once I go back home, I always keep it in mind. I have sisters, I have mom. Um, otherwise, it would be very much difficult to live in the society because you know the very our society, it's very at times it's conservative, and at times it's very taunting. They will taunt me and my sisters, my mother that your boy is like collecting trash from Buller Lake and then you live on those that, that trash. So I come every morning from that place to this place. So nobody can recognize me in a different area. Then I go back and then I started. This was like the, the, the kind of understanding he has given me, the kind of story he gave me. It was very instant. I decided, I mean, as a filmmaker, you have to be very decisive and I decided there and then, this is the boy, this is the film, this is the story, which I will have to pitch, which I will have to do for larger audiences. So then I convinced him to go to his home, see everything. So then we started to make a shed, cow shed for his uh, mother. And we built that cow shed and then I just made them friends, gave them complete assurance that I am here to <clears throat> help you out. I'm help. I'm here to protect you, and then I'm, I'm here to tell your story to the larger audience. How we can just protect and conserve the Wooler Lake from trash, the the kind of degradation it has brought up. So, while doing this, he told me the story actually is of his father. His father, he was uh, like a fisherman who would do this fishing from the Wooler Lake, but just five years down the line, and then. He had just had some injury from some kind of blunt object in Willow Lake. So that injury, yeah, that turned it into a cancer in his leg, right leg. So a, a poor chap couldn't have much things to do because he has fed his family. He couldn't take a lot of care as far as his injury is concerned. So it developed into a complete cancer. And so after some time, the whole of the leg had to be amputated amputated uh, from a hospital and whatever the saving they had, whatever the property, something they had, they had sold it out. And that moment of time, it was 250,000 rupees they had spent uh, on his uh, treatment. Uh, and then once uh, leg was amputated, then they took him back to home. And once you are at a home, you are without one leg, you can imagine the kind of uh, care you have to take, the medicines, uh, the food and everything. And then he was the only bread earner actually from, from family. It was a double. I mean, the shock, the, the, the devastation was double. So after three months, whatever they had, they had put it to use. And even the friends, the family, the neighbors, they tried to help out. Whatever they could do, they did it um, from their part. But uh, ultimately, the father died because of amputation, because of uh, the, the poison had just spread across the body. So he couldn't survive after three months. So then you can imagine a family having no bread earner and having just this boy who's just eight, nine years of age, then two daughters, um, four years of age, then six years of age. 
a mother, she could just go to different homes, try to just clean the kitchens and then utensils. And to, to, she managed it for a, say a year or so, but it was never enough. Like 100 rupees at 150 rupees, it's never enough. And kids were just in the school. You have to pay the fees. You have to pay their uniform, clothing, and everything. She couldn't keep the pace. And one day, Bilal was supposed to submit 900 rupees at school for his eighth class examinations, board examinations. Mother tried her best for almost a month. And the last day, just gone away. Bilal asked the mother, then I want to have fees. But she couldn't just manage 800 rupees, 900 rupees. So Bilal, I mean, very conscious boy, he told his mother that you, from now onwards, you stay at home, just do your homework, just do the home chores, let me go, let me earn, let me bring these, my sisters up, I will provide for their care and upbringing. I'll do the work. And then Bilal had decided to go to the tea stall in Srinagar. But before that, he he was with a mechanic, an auto mechanic. He joined him, but auto mechanic, I mean, he won't give you anything unless and until you are not a trained person. Once you are a trained person, and once you give earning to him, then and only then he can just provide you some kind of a salary. He had told him it will take you another six months to have that expertise. And then you, once you earn, you give it to me. Out of that, I'll give the salary. But Bilal had no time. Yeah. He left it you know, midway after a month. He couldn't do it. Then he went to Srinagar with a tea stall. That's why we met. And then finally, he, while doing that, he had already decided that this is the thing I have to do. I have to clean the Vula Lake. Why to clean the Vula Lake? It wasn't first for money purpose. It was first that he, there was something in his mind that this is the Vula Lake. The trash, the bad things in Wollodik, they took the life out of my father. Yeah. I'll clean it. That was the consciousness. That was the kind of, say, the, 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 the mind and soul, the compassion he was having for Wollodik. So that's why I felt that this is the story. This is my story. This is his story. And it's relating with Wollodik. The, the death Wollodik is facing because of us humans. And the yeah. death, his father has just you know, like like gone through. His family has gone through. It relates together. As, Let's have a story on it. So we built on it almost two and a half years. And then 2014, uh, the huge deluge uh, Kashmir was in. So that day we were in Rajbagh and Srinagar. We were in deluge. We were almost in 18 feet water. But believe me, the only thing in my mind was always Bilal, Bilal's home. Because Bilal's home is in midst of Vula Lake. Mm -hmm. So just imagining that moment of time, what will be happening with Bilal, what will be happening with like Bilal's home, the Kacha home. Yeah. So I left my family at Srinagar. I went to straight away to Bilal's home in Vula Lake. It was a quite a difficult job, but I managed to reach him and found Bilal was, Bilal's family, entire family was in deluge, almost 10 feet uh, water was over his home and it, it was shocking for me it was entirely a different I hadn't, I hadn't seen it in, in life that much of sadness that much of gloom that much of <clears throat> like you have two siblings you have your mother nobody is there to help you out and when you are in that kind of a, kind of a deluge, nobody is going to help you. Why? Because everybody was with his own, uh, yeah. yeah, with his own story. So yeah. that's I decided. No, we have to do this story, and we did that story, and it, it wonderfully went well. Then, yeah, I would like to um, <laughs> show um, some part of that um, that you've shown. Mansi, would you like? Would you do you have any question? Would you like to ask something? Yeah, I will ask a question, but probably Anuja, you may uh, show the film and meanwhile, I will just uh, interact with Jalal Sahib. Um, yeah. Jalal Sahib, when you say that uh, Bilal uh, was going through all this and uh, you were really trying to be, uh, you know, first be friend with him to really understand the situation. And from there, when you understood the 
uh, you know the situation of this little boy and when you were going there during the flood time you also realize that it is not only bilal it's the story of many bilals probably or uh, many many families who are living out there how do you see uh, our society in in uh, through these situations where we have so much of disparity i mean uh, you know between the well offs and the, the torn offs i would say or those who are barely managing uh, their lives i mean uh, i'm sure there are many bilals uh, in uh, kashmir as well as many bilals across the country and their whole families and then uh, they are impacted by uh, natural as well as humanly constructed uh, disasters yeah that, that, that that's really really the question we will have to put up ourselves we will have to put up the system we are going through unfortunate uh, as far as wooler lake is concerned i'll tell you it's a complete civilization almost say 80000 people are directly living on wooler lake they are directly involved in wooler lake they are directly uh, the livelihood of them is <clears throat> impacted by betterment of wooler lake or the, uh, the, 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 the degradation of wooler lake almost 4 lakh people are indirectly involved in wooler lake so they get their livelihood from the wooler lake no doubts about about that Uh, the, the complete civilization around Wooler Lake is uh, like either they are fishermen, or they are so boatsmen, or they are, say uh, they uh, get uh, those uh, water chestnut out of it. They get nadru uh, the rhizomes we say kakti bolte hain bar. Yeah. They get that and they sell it, and that's what the livelihood is. But because of conflict, because of <clears throat> neglect since last fifty years in particular, and thirty years in very much. that wooler lake um, has degraded to such a extent such a extent it, it no more is fresh water lake it's you can see the the, the kind of uh, deltas uh, they have got erected because of siltation kashmir like you you have it's immense the mountains it's whatever the erosion happens in mountains that reaches wooler lake that is the one funda second thing is we don't have a kind of water management we don't have a kind of um, solid waste management in whole of srinagar in whole of say, south kashmir that leads to wooler lake uh, from south it it reaches to jhelum from srinagar it leads to dal lake to achar lake the other lakes which we have in srinagar then it it, it by uh, say jhelum it reaches to wooler lake finally the dumping yard is the wooler lake that's the one kind of uh, unfortunate part of it the second thing is like as far as the society is concerned there are you know we we are a welfare state no doubt about it we have lots of lots of um, in schemes for house making for um, say nutrition purposes for mid day meals schools free schools but the implementation unfortunate part of it is the implementation is it's almost i mean it's it's not the kind of uh, implementation we would love to have it's not implemented on ground in a way it should be otherwise there are schemes where we can just uh, uh, to some extent we can just fill that uh, barrier we have and otherwise you know economically we have lots of lots of barriers in society even from kashmir to kanyakumari wherever you go you'll see those kind of barriers where you have haves and you where you have have nots that's an unfortunate part of it but the system has to work in tandem system has to work in such a manner that the schemes government of rolled uh, government has rolled out they need to reach these kind of people they need to reach these kind of families who are living just you know, below a dollar below as even a 50 rupees a day i have seen it myself a boy who's selling trash and then feeding his family you can have the comparisons uh, i mean how our society is going up and then the unfortunate part of a part of kashmir is again the same thing we have good well of people we have good systems good schools good networking good healthcare say good uh, to some extent good infrastructure roads and everything and then we have a good tourism but then again the there there are uh, la- what slacking is the social organization what slacking is the s- schemes implementation what slacking is a civil society is just somehow tangled in those kind of uh, conflict say issues and the government in itself is in a law and order situation a government in itself is conflict resolution civil society is in same manner 
unfortunately, the kids, the women, the environment, they're ignored. And you know, Kashmir, we are completely, completely dependent on nature. Our whole GDP, ADP, whatever you say, our economy is nature, nothing else than nature. We don't have a hardware industry. We don't have a software industry. We don't have railways. We don't have a real estate. We have almost, I mean, nothing which you can see beyond the Jumma and Kashmir. You go to the rest of India, you'll find a lot of, lot of, lot of industries which are, you have a private sector, you have IT industry, wonderfully flourishing. But in Kashmir, whatever we have, it's based on nature. It's glacial lakes, it's glacial uh, glaciers, it's forests, it's rivers. It's it's only water, actually. It's, it's, it's nature. So for us to protect and preserve water is paramount. I mean, even though I say them that Azadi can wait for 50 years, Azadi can wait for 100 years, but protecting and preserving Wulak Lake, protecting and preserving Dal Lake, protecting and preserving our forests, glaciers is paramount. Yeah. This is which our generations can utilize for their own benefit. Otherwise, you have nothing. We have nothing other than that. And even the agriculture, the, 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 the apple, the saffron, the other fruits we, we, we grow, it's completely dependent on nature. Even the tourism. Yeah. Believe me, it's completely dependent on nature. If your nature is good, then and only then you can just have a tourism. Then and only then the tourists from rest of India, rest of the world are, will be inclined to come to your Kashmir. If your Wulu Lake is wonderful, then they will enjoy it. If we have a wonderful uh, ecotourism, even we have not the bird tourism. We have, we, we have started in Kashmir. But they will, uh, birds will be there only once you have water, once you have those kind of, uh, say, the... Uh, uh, the, the the sites, Ramsar Convention sites, the wetlands, if they are gone, then how, how will you run your economy? How will you run your own affairs? That's yeah. the part of it. That's unfortunate. Like We haven't taken care of it, uh, particularly since the last 35 years. It has been very devastating as far as your ecology is concerned. Mm -hmm. You made a very important point here when you uh, talked about Kashmir uh, being totally dependent on nature. And it had, this has been time immemorial. It's not that it's a matter of now. Uh, and uh, when we see uh, Buller Lake, uh, particularly in uh, because we are talking about the film there, the lake has already reduced uh, by many, many square kilometers. It's less than half than what it was 100 years ago. And uh, I'm sure the population has increased uh, more than double in 100 years. And the lake, I mean, just Bular is one of the example, but this is the example all over the country where the water bodies in the past, there were many for few people. And now we have few lakes for many people. Many so people. the whole dynamics has completely changed. And when we talk about wetlands and livelihood, they go hand in hand. But at the same time, with urbanization, we, we really somewhere lost this whole understanding that interdependency of the water body and the humans are, are you know, uh, I mean, we are actually heading towards an irreparable damage. We have actually moved that side. But uh, where do you think in case of Kashmir, which was always dependent on nature and water bodies, as you rightly mentioned, Kashmir is about all forms of water, you know, whether it is coming from snow, <laughs> glacier or lakes or rivers, because Bular is fed by Jhelam or it's mother of Jhelam or you can say daughter of Jhelam that way. Uh, where do you think uh, uh, the, the, the humanity or the population of uh, Kashmir really lost uh, the the path of really taking care of its water bodies. Because many places we see uh, that tourism has impacted, but when we look at place like Kashmir, which is also dependent on tourism because of its nature. So somewhere the nature is uh, required, but at the same time, the impact of tourism is also affecting the nature uh, by its own merits. So maybe I, we can take uh, uh, Farooq ji who uh, really wants to uh, communicate and then maybe you can answer both of us and uh, Anuja, you can take it up later. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Farooq ji. Please unmute yourself. Mm Yeah, I'm I'm audible. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Baba Sab, and Namaskar to other respected guests. Good evening to all. 
am very happy uh, you know uh, to listen the experience uh, from uh, Jalaluddin Baba Sahib and I'm thankful to uh, Anjubali ma'am and uh, all the uh, the organization the, to invite me on uh, such a platform why why you can really have uh, not only you know expertise in different things but uh, sharing the experience and sharing you know uh, joys and sorrows of life is entirely a different thing and has a different taste uh, for all uh, the matters baba sahib has rightly said uh, whatever he has narrated uh, he has narrated an experience that he had you know uh, from a child uh, namely bilal and in fact i have also uh, gone through some of the story where bilal has narrated uh, all about his passion to clean the dal lake and uh, the picture I, I i have not yet seen the picture uh, but uh, surely i will uh, saver saving saving the saver and uh, it really you know uh, i was just working in the kitchen garden uh, i had uh, come from court and after that i was working in the kitchen garden as of a routine and uh, when i saw your uh, this text and uh, i saw saving the saver and it really struck me my uh, heart here that uh, really you know uh, the people working uh, for the trash and for uh, working for the environment are uh, you know coming up with a very 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 attractive you know uh, uh, these themes and so far as the water is concerned i have uh, recently we had a uh, discussion over this that uh, like bilal like bilal i was also compelled you know uh, to work for you know uh, the plastic waste to work for the solid waste management because i am living in at a such a place uh, where i have invited and in fact we have started the uh, you know doing things uh, with regard to that uh somewhere in july july uh, we may invite all of you uh, to verinag where from the jahlim ordnance yeah. <clears throat> and in the morning i was uh, uh, thinking about it that jahlim is a big name jahlim is a you know uh, patent uh, you know uh, when we talk about rivers dood ganga uh, when we talk about lidar when we talk about wetlands uh when we talk about lakes and all that and jahlim is the main contributor to all uh, the whole of this uh, you know uh, the wetlands uh, wuller lake chilidal uh, then other many more uh, because jahlim starts from verina and all the tributaries like lidder like uh, uh, other rivers coming from kulgam ahrbal and padgam and uh, other uh, sites the whole uh, water that flows down and uh, finally it is called jahl and uh, though there are local names also like uh, river lidder is there uh, other uh, rivers are there and when i saw jahlim because the water coming out of the spring uh, i hope uh, bilal sahab might have visited verinag verinag uh, spring yeah yeah, and, yeah. yeah it's a, such a wonderful place you know uh, almost you know uh, i think uh, it is al almost uh, more than 100 feet in dia <laughs> and the depth of spring is uh, you know no one can see because i am born and brought up here <laughs> i had schooling at the very place just at the you know gate of the my my uh, middle uh, where from i had middle education green hill public school that is just on the gate of the uh, this uh, jahlim you know uh, right from the uh, the jahlim flows down and having regard to those days having regard to the you know uh, uh, the days we used to enjoy our mothers used to enjoy the water our mothers used to you know uh, get water from uh, these uh, resources there were no there was no tap water available uh, baba sahab will uh, you know uh, correct it if i'm uh, i'm wrong prior to 80 i have seen my mother i have seen my uh, you know uh, 
the women folk of my area not only in Virinag, where I reside, not only in Duru and Anantrag, South Kashmir, North Kashmir, it's everywhere. And even right now, there are hundreds of uh, thousands of families, those who are directly dependent on the river water, where they don't have tap water right now, because uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe the nomads, maybe the people living at uh, you know uh, mountains, they don't have uh, the government is doing all the efforts, but still then they are using the river water, and I have seen myself. I'm I will talk about Fetista, I will talk about Jahlim. When, I, when the idea of this whole uh, struck my mind that, no, this is the time. I'm, I have uh, crossed half century. Now, uh, this is the time I have to contribute for the society, not only the society, for the uh, nature. Because Almighty Allah has created us. And he has not created us to build uh, you know, buildings. He has not created us to you know, enjoy the luxuries. He has created us. We are one of the creation of Almighty Allah and we have to do something good, not only to ourselves, not only mm -hmm. to our family, but to the society as whole, well, but to the nation as whole, well, but to the people we are living in as whole. Well. So when we see the condition of these rivers, like uh, Baba Sab has said that it was a time I had my schooling in national school, Sirinagar. I have been student of Gandhi Memorial College, Sirinagar. my friends in uh, those who are living in houseboats. I still remember one of my friends, Basharat, when he invited me uh, first time. Am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when, I, when, when, I, when I see him first time and I told him that uh, because I was from village, though we were living in uh, Srinagar and uh, I was uh, studying in Srinagar, and he took me to his houseboat. I was overwhelmingly, I said, This is such a wonderful place. And uh, somewhere in uh, 80, 80, uh, 83, 84. You all might have experienced this thing whenever we go to, you know, uh, some tourist place like Shalimar, Gulmarak, Tangmarak, Verinag, Kokarnag, Achabal, uh, you know, Ahrabal, Pahalgam. We never drink water from the, uh, these rivers. We took that bristlery with us and saying this uh, supreme, see, we are, you are, you are, you are not now, uh, you are not safe. We are taking, taking this bristlery and we are enjoying the bristlery. Or many, uh, I have uh, given a proposal to the government, uh, rather, rather to the uh, Department of Tourism, to ban this bristlery water, to ban taking the bottles in uh, gardens, to ban Kukarnag. The water from Kukarnag is, uh, you know, uh, famous. Water from Jahlim, water from other uh, these uh, uh, water resources. So, I will not take much of the time. I will film a clip play a clip of the film. I will play a clip of the film. I will play a clip of the film. I will play a clip of the they double for Billa in the fateful September 2014 floods. Lela he had never imagined that his companion. Hanji? I, when we came here, I looked a lot of trash and I think I have to eat the fish. But I know the people eat and I eat also. Miseries never end. They double for Billa in the fateful September 2014 floods. He had never imagined that his companion, the wooler, can react this way. 
The floods washed away the trash that was his livelihood, trampling on his hopes. His village was 10 feet deep in water. Even his home was flooded, the one that his parents built with their sweat and blood. He and his family took refuge in a neighbor's boat who were kind enough to let them use it. Farida, a local lady on her makeshift boat, narrates her heart out, the misery, the doom, and the wretchedness she is facing. Wooler has thrown back its curses and misery on human face. This is what man has always been doing to Wooler. Man is never able to face the glaring and stark reality that the nature's fury is. So this, so was, this uh, was this yeah, was yeah uh, this was this was this was the condition in 2014 flash you know uh, people were not even you know uh, able to move out of their homes like Bilal was narrating that they were sleeping in night and when flood comes and that uh, you know penetrate the water penetrates into their uh, you know house ports and uh, the sh temporary, temporary sheds they were living in and uh, when they feel some wetness from downside and they when they poke out and they saw the uh, hole of the shed and the house boards they have you know uh, they are in water and the cattle you know ducks and uh, chickens and other uh, you know the livestock they were uh, having that got destroyed. It not only that, the people, you know, living in lake, rather, uh, I, I think the people living in Sanwar, or people living in, you know, uh, Rajbagh and Kursu and all other places, those were, were directly, you know, uh, exposed to the floods. And it was, it was really, it was not only, you know, uh, the uh, Dal Lake, but the whole of Kashmir. And what, who contributes to it? Yeah, Farooq sir, I think I, I am really key, very, very interested to have a session with you on role of judiciary in taking care of water bodies and in taking care of livelihood. But I think for the, for now, we uh, we really want to go back to Bilal and discuss more with uh, yeah. Jalal sir. So I'm, Jalal, I'm sir, requesting yeah. your phone number and contact details at the chat box. Please drop it there. 
because we right. really have we really have to have more sessions on role of judiciary and role of government in taking care of climate disasters in taking care of children uh, in climate uh, resilience and uh, other matters so i mean I, we really want to get into how uh, uh, bilal is now doing and probably that kind of conversation in the last leg of uh, the today's session so anuja um, can yeah. you take it over and uh, farooq sir please drop yeah. your contact details at the chat box yeah definitely, so we, can, definitely. we can really take it up in uh, at length discussion and we should yeah. not divert for yeah. today's discussion from bilal and yes <laughs> definitely because uh, baba saab is the guest and uh, we have yes, to listen from him that is where I yeah. saw, yes i really have to thank you all thank you thank so you. much thank for understanding you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank you so जलाल हमने देखा कि कैसे फ्लड ने उनके पूरे घर फैमिली लाइवलीहुड विमेन चिल्ड्रन सबको इतना कर दिया और जैसे कि नरेटर ने कहा कि लेक वूलर इज स्पिटिंग आउट एवरीथिंग दैट द ह्यूमन पुट इन ये यू नो एक बहुत ही बहुत ही इम्पैक्टफुल सेंटेंस है क्योंकि हर जगह जब फ्लड आता है तो वो कचरे के कारण या ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज के कारण ही आता है सो so, आप बताएं कि अब हम अपने सेशन के एंड में आके तरफ आ चुके हैं आप बताएं कि अब आपने जो ये फिल्म बनाई है आप इस फिल्म के जरिए और क्या आपको वो जो अवेयरनेस या जो एक्शन जैसे कि आपने कहा इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं होता जो आपको व्हाट यू हैड थॉट वर यू एबल टू गेट द डिजायर्ड इम्पैक्ट येट एज येट the fortunate part of it is like um, there are very less films which do make their impact but fortunate enough for me i'm lucky for that matter that film made the real inroads because of the film because of its publicity because it 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 it, it went for the national awards at mumbai where um, sham benigal was the jury mm-hmm. chairman of jury mike pande was the chairman then there are so many dignitaries from bollywood and even from hollywood some from oh. dst from forest department water resources jal shakti and everything once film was judged for national award for best film the, the films which have been made i mean which were made uh, with crores and crores of rupees i mean they couldn't make make that kind of impact what bilal did the kind of narrative bilal had put up the kind of uh, structure i had put up into the film that was where the message lies that was where the the, the, the people thought this is a different film yeah. so on that award and then the media started to come chip in spreading the message about the film then all of a sudden on 27 september 2017 uh prime minister mr modi he took it into his man ki baat and he spoke about the film and bilal almost for two and a half minutes which was a huge say kind of publicity because the moment it comes from the uh, the highest post in the country the systems in kashmir they started to shake and they started to take care of bilal the first and then started to take care of the village then they thought what to do with the villar and then fortunate enough in the next move and uh, this film was taken by united nations for world water forum and which was shown in brasilia and brazil and then it was taken by european uh, commission then um, we are water at madrid spain then the, the, the message started to spread in such a manner that the government and the system in srinagar in jammu in in in, in rest of the country they were forced to do something yeah. so it became a i mean a, a kind of a uh, subject matter kind of a research matter for students even for for that matter even the srinagar assembly they they took the matter head on then fortunate enough uh the, the government of india came up with a huge financial plan which is 1600 crore rupees mm-hmm. as far as wooler lake is concerned and the work is now happening almost 500 to 600 crores had has already been spent as far as eco terrorism is concerned the dredging is concerned and how to <clears throat> finish the illegal encroachments for that matter for that way the story has like come a miles apart and it has made lot of inroads in civil society and lot of ngos are coming up and uh, then the government of india is now like uh, taking it uh, furthermore 
uh, head on say uh, uh, the, 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 the committee has been made under the parliamentary say uh, committee which has been set up to see Wooler Lake and the rest of the lakes in Kashmir. But more than that, as myself being a I'm a mountaineer by hobby, uh, by passion. I'm a mountaineer. I'm a trekker. I go to the high altitude lakes. It's uh, like more than five, 500 meters, so 600, 6,000 meters, 500, 5,000 meters up in the mountains. I've seen these glacier, glaciers by myself, by eyes, and I, I go every Sunday and see them. But the condition they are in now, that's a very unfortunate part of it. We are, I mean, playing no role as far as global warming is concerned, as far as degradation of environment is concerned. We have no role at all, even not, a, I mean, a, a zero, 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 point zero person. Where it comes from is the rest of the world. Where it comes from the rest of the country. We are the sufferers actually end of the day. I have seen like the glacier, we, 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 we are holding almost 6,800 glaciers for your mm -hmm. kind information, like whole of the Himalayas, as far as the transhuman Kashmir is concerned, say even the, the, the Kurakram range is concerned. So that way we are the, the real water passion for rest of the for country, for rest of Asia, for rest of the world. Why I say so with certainty, we have lots of deposits of water. As far as the Niti Aayog report, just to, I mean, it, it came in in 2019. Yeah, I suppose in 2019. As per their analysis, as per their analytical research, they say that almost 30 crore people in India won't have a drop to drink after yeah. 10 years down the line. And by next 30 years, 50 years down the line, we may have even 50 crore people. So that's yeah. where our area is much, much more important for the country, for the betterment of the country, for the drinking water facilitation as far as the rest of the population in India is concerned. So that's why the government has to come up with huge plan to, yeah. to, to, to start conserve and protect these lakes, to start and conserve these uh, the glacial lakes, the glaciers, the forests, the rivers we have. Yeah. From here, we can tape the water, we can move them and then I mean, send it to the rest of country. And here, the water, you don't need any treatment. Absolutely not. Zero treatment is needed. You just need to put up the pipes and just send it to the rest of country. How we see, how we send the electricity from Jammu and Kashmir. Our, I mean, government has already taped the reverse of Kashmir for electricity purpose by hydroelectric projects. That's the same way we, they can do as far as the drinking water is concerned. But then we will have to think in a different parameter. Yeah. Kashmir gets its water from the south. Uh, Ms. Farooq was talking about it. We get the bulk of water from the Shishnag. Shishnag is a very holy uh, lake. You know, it's it's a glacial lake. Again, it, it comes under the, the Yatra route. Yeah. Uh, from uh, some Pahalgam to Amarnath Yatra. So the kind of activity we are doing it, we, we aren't taking them into consideration. What will happen after 10 years down the line? So we will have to think about those water bodies. Yeah. With Shishnag, we have a Sonsar Lake. Again, a huge lake. With Shishnag, you go to the left side of you have a Royal Sir. You have a Dud Sir. You have a lot of glaciers. You have a lot of glacier lakes. Almost I can count you 30 glacier lakes around the Amarnath Yadra. Mm -hmm. Today I was, I mean, even, even today I was reading a, a story that this year this Yatra has been extended for two months. Fine. I mean, Yatra to us, it's, I mean, uh, you come over our chests, you come over, over our heads, you are most welcome with love, compassion, everything. Please do come. Please do come for the Yatra. But make some special changes as far as roots are concerned. Mm. You come for a Yatra, you come for a sacred purpose. You need a food to live for two and three days. That's at most. Char chapati agar aap khayenge din mein to ho jayega. Raat ko char chapati thodi si sabzi aapko chahiye. You need to live on. That's what it is. Otherwise, aapka jo mission hai, that's a sacred mission. Aapne jaake bole baba ki aapne minat leni hai. Unke unse aapne prasad lena hai. Unse aapne shada leni hai. Aapne wahan matlab five star hotel ka treatment nahi chahiye. But I can give you an example. Posh patri mein we have a one langar which can cater 5,000 people at a time. But unfortunate part of it is you demand anything on earth. Yeah. Leave aside just the non-veg. They will give you you. Whether it's a continental, it's Chinese, it's Indian, any food, which is not required at all. I mean, almost 80 to yeah. 100 millions of foods, they serve at that, 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 that kind of thing. And then what, how they prepare it? They utilize the, the, the commercial gas cylinders. They utilize the, uh, the diesel engines. The, the kind of traffic you see in those two months, 
we will have to change that mentality. We will have to make them eco-friendly. We will have to utilize the technology for betterment. We can utilize the solar technology. We have lots, lots of, lots of say, those are open areas. You don't have a, I mean, a tree cover. You don't have anything else. You can utilize the solar energy for uh, preparing food. You can utilize solar energy for heating and everything. You don't require the diesel engines. You don't require the, 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 the plastic and polythene tents. So that we can avoid. And then we, we will have to then make the flow in, in such a manner. It doesn't affect the ecology. It doesn't affect the, the water bodies. It doesn't affect those glaciers. It doesn't affect the wildlife. Believe me, I've seen it since the last 15 years. It's, it's changing every year. Absolutely. And now you can see the effect in Kashmir. Since last one and a half month, rains are not stopping in Kashmir. Everything is now devastated. It's hailstorm and hailstorm. Every day you will... Uh, hear a news from south, hear a news from north that yahan pe aaj itna ola bari ho gaya, change ka ola bari ho gaya, sara fruit aapka khatam ho gaya. Yeah. That's, that's where the, 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 the weather, erratic weather is coming up. The, the, where the, the, the global warming, the uh, methane yeah. gas emission is affecting our lives. And I have said you already that we are living on nature, nothing else than nature. So we will have to take more care as far as Jammu and Kashmir is concerned, particularly the Kashmir is concerned, this region is concerned, the South Wala region is concerned, where from the water comes from, where the, the most of the glaciers we have, say, from Kola High to, say, Son Sir to Royal Sir, we will have to put, protect them, preserve them, but not just for the Kashmir, for the rest of the country, actually. Yeah. We, are a, we are a single entity, we are a single country. If we yeah. need care, we, we need lots of lots of water required for our population to be done upon them. So we'll have to take fair, care now. Otherwise, we'll ruin them. And once anything gets ruined, it's quite a difficult job to, to, to get back, back to its originality. That's true. You know, it has been said by many people that the third world war will be for water. It's a very tragic situation. Mansi, would you like to add? Mansi is a researcher. Jo abhi thode din pehle hi she was uh, at the, you know, a project in Ganga. So please share, Mansi. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Baba Sahib. Now I know that you can be called like that also. So I <laughs> use that version. It makes it easier. Uh, you were mentioning very important point here uh, about uh, the dependency on water, but also linked it to climate change. And at the same time, you uh, also uh, raised some alarms on the way uh, we are actually commercializing nature indirectly uh, through tourism. And you may recall in your own early lifetime that earlier it used to be, you know, uh, people going with this pilgrimage notion to uh, hill, yeah. uh, hill uh, towns and Himalayas. And, uh, and there are particular age group which used to travel because it was a path, sacred path. Yeah. But now uh, the whole pil pilgrimage has shifted to uh, tourism, which I saw also in Haridwar, Ishikesh and up, up there. And this whole shift of, I will say, civilization or, you know, uh, lifestyle from pilgrimage to tourism, where even a small, ch a newly born child is also going for uh, tourism to Himalayas, where a senior citizen is also going and where people are going many times, have, uh, you know, in their lives. In the past, pilgrimage was only once in a lifetime, you know, and now with affordability, now with accessibility, it has become like, uh, you know, uh, it's, it has actually exploited the nature more than ever because we are seeing that everything is in my control and I can do whatever I wish to. And that's a big toll on the local population. On one hand, they need tourism for economy, but on the other hand, there's a huge cost of yeah. tourism which comes on the local uh, itself so it's high time that at a government level also that we need to really do this cost benefit analysis whether by providing tourism as an economy is it really helping or it is a heavier cost to save the environment than encouraging yeah. tourism i mean that's a discussion altogether different but from the film i have really an, uh, a very touching question from my end where is villa can we have you know have him on the show? And I was really wishing that he was sitting on the show here and having few words with it, with us. But how is he now? What is he doing? And uh, I think that will be my soft question uh, as a last question from my end on 
we can really discuss climate change, never ending uh, question and tourism. But I'm more interested about- Fortunate, fortunate enough, Bilal is like, he's employed with the Srinagar Municipal Corporation. He's a brand ambassador with uh, SMC. Yeah. And uh, you heard it from the Prime Minister's yes. <laughs> mouth himself that he's kind of, he is not a, like a Bollywood star. He's not a Hollywood star. He's not a cricketer, but a rack picker becoming a brand ambassador. That's a huge thing, no doubt about it. A question is like Bilal, right now. Bilal is like like he's uh, he's traveling to Delhi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, you might be. I mean, uh, he, he might have taken a flight from Srinagar. To, uh, this was the day he was supposed to fly to Delhi, where uh, he has been um, called for a guest on fifth June, World okay. mm -hmm. Day. So that's one one part of it. And then I'm traveling tomorrow. Now. Yeah, I'm traveling busy. tomorrow to Goa for uh, Goa Environment Film Festival. Again, it's a G a, a G20 like a conference in Delhi. Bilal is well settled right now, no doubt about it. I mean, just, we, we will definitely have a with Bilal if you would love to uh, next time we will yes. have a interaction with him. The problem is he won't be able to speak in a, in a chaste Hindi Urdu, but we will have, surely we will have him. Yes, we would like to interact with him. Yes. I also talk about plastic pollution and uh, pollution because that's a, so a campaign which we are already uh, trying to uh, take it up as a nationwide campaign on plastic pollution. And we want to touch upon many, many people across uh, the country at uh, different uh, states and cities. So maybe some other time. So Anuja, would you uh, do the vote of thanks? And then, like, then I do yes. the number. And I really wanted to share some one little part uh, because today has been really, you know, we have been blessed to listen to the story of such an amazing person um, who's a child for us, but, uh, you know, we can say that he's gone through so much at such a young age. So, I was very happy that we could you know, na idhar kare, lekin mein wo aapke saamne share karna chaungi the last part jo full screen kar dena haan ji Billa's Bula Lake, a World Heritage Wetland Site under the Ramsar Convention Charter of UNESCO. UNESCO serves as the depository for the convention. It is an intergovernmental treaty which provides the framework for international cooperation for the conservation of wetland habitats. Conservation thus becomes obligatory, but Bula Lake is yet to see the light of the day. So what I want to say is, yeah. If we say Lake, ab, bhi bolenge, to wo Bilal ki Bular Lake, I can think of it. Now, in that way, we will always remember that it is Lake of Bilal. Ki Bular Lake hai. Thank but you fortunate so enough, abhi, abhi jo right now, hai, Bilal has made a huge, huge change as far as Bular Lake is concerned. I have already okay. told there's a project, 1,600 crore rupees, but the larger project is 6,000 crore. Actually. The government of India wants to put up a whole Bollywood across the Willow Lake. They want to, I mean, tape it in, in, in such a manner, it, it becomes a tourism, ecotourism passion. Reason is like, it, it's among us, those mountains, and mountains are full of wildlife. And mm -hmm. then you have a huge number of migratory birds. And then yeah. there's a lot of land involved as far as Willow Lake is concerned. So in a way, film has, I mean, I, I mean done its part. Bilal has done its part. Now it's a civil society, it's a government agencies, it's now the people like us who will have to take pledge and we'll have to, I mean, take some steps to make those projects really, really, uh, I mean, impenetrable and then make them 
corruption free make them that they they have to do what they have to do we are supposed to take care of that otherwise you you know the the, the, the corruption is other part of uh, like the kashmir and unfortunately since last 30 years it has been given actually a protection to to manage the conflict which which, which is very nonsense i mean we will have to see those kind of things. The political part, it has to go away. Political part, it has to go away. It's no sure. more, even the same is with the, the Amarnath Yatra. We will yeah. have, have to see it through the, the religious paradigm. We will have to see it through the ecology. We don't need to, uh, I mean, through the prism of political that the stability has come up and then we'll show that Amarnath has a number, a large number of, I mean, pilgrims. That's very unfortunate. If we do that like that, that is not required because we need those glaciers. We need those glacial lakes. We need the, those forests. We need those, those streams to flow towards the rest of the country. So we can have a better water management. We can have a water to drink actually. Yeah, it is going to be, um, ecology versus economics and uh, may the wisdom prevail that's what we want and we will work hard towards it with Bilal as a um, role model that ek bachcha jab itna determine ho kar kuch kar sakta hai to hum sab kyon nahi kar sakte thank you so much so much Jalal ye story to bahut hi heartwarming thi thank you Mansi thank you Farooq ji everyone thank you um so thank you so much for joining and listening to this um, and um, it has been a very good session um, sharing and session and we'll just bring to an end here thanking you all uh, next session hoga waters related that will be um, Friday waters on 9th June um, it will be a book reading and uh, 5 p.m. again, Tushar Shah. Uh, it's called Taming the Anarchy, Groundwater Governance in South Asia. So please um, do join. And the link to join will be uh, given in the chat. Uh, otherwise, when you're all in the group, uh, you'll be added to the speaker's group. link And uh, we'll have uh, June 7th ko uh, Wednesday, so water session, just may socio ecological challenges of lake restoration will be the topic. So, you are all most welcome to join that. And uh, www, uh, like w4w.in, for up the information will jayegi. And thank you so much. Uh, if you all can uh, switch on your uh, videos for a second, then make a uh, commemorative photo. Keech lungi. Because Environment Day se pehle hamara ye session raha. So happy Environment Day to all of you. This was like a commemoration. Thank you so much. Um, agar aap sab jo, um, all the best to all the amazing work that you're all doing. Thank you and we'll say bye. Abdu okay, I'll click another picture. There are still people. Huh? Monami and Gulab, if you start your video, we will have a photo of you. I think we can you can leave it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I clicked. Thank you so much. Thank you all of you. Have, thanks have a lot. wonderful Please take care of yourself. And yes, have a very good evening. And thanks, uh, Jalalji, for the wonderful session and all the participants for joining the session. Thank God you. bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.